It's first, it is my uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, Hirokazu Kamioka from NTT Communication Science Laboratories. Uh, it's especially a pleasure because uh, he taught me a lot of what I know. He was actually my mentor, uh, unofficial third PhD advisor uh, when I was a PhD student at the University of Tokyo. And um, so he, he graduated uh, in 2007 from the University of Tokyo with um, a PhD and then went on to work at NTT. Uh, he did a stint again at the University of Tokyo as an adjunct associate professor from 2011 to 2016. Uh, he has been uh, very productive, very creative, uh, more than 150 papers uh, already, uh, and uh, more than 20 a year, I guess, <laughs> nowadays. Uh, and um, uh, it's very, always very impressive work on, um, with a, a lot of um, very elegant, uh, always trying to find close form solutions and uh, uh, interesting takes on, on, uh, on problems. So I'm very happy to see um, uh, he, to have him here and uh, talk about voice conversion uh, with image to image translation and sequence to sequence learning approaches. Thanks. Thank you for the nice introduction, uh, John, uh, Jonathan. So, uh, the, the work I will be talking about today is on voice conversion with image to image translation and sequence to sequence learning approaches. And actually, this uh, is a joint work with my colleagues in NTT. Okay, so uh, the voice conversion technique refers to a technique to convert some factors in speech uh, without changing the uttered in, uh, sentence. And we believe that this technique can help overcome many kinds of barriers in that prevents individuals from having smooth and efficient uh, communication. And such barriers include hearing loss, vocal disorder, language barrier, and so on. And if we can make voice conversion systems work in online, uh, we can realize smooth and efficient verbal communication with the help of the, of the system. So for example, uh, we can convert input speech to a different style that the receiver can easily understand or feel more comfortable. And the examples of this uh, such uh, task include converting normal speech into different person's voice, uh, uh, converting foreign accented language into uh, native accent speech, and converting electrolaryngeal speech into natural sounding speech. So this is a typical pipeline of the BC, VC model training in, in traditional frameworks, uh, which consists of collecting parallel utterances of source and target speech, performing time alignment between source and target utterances so that we obtain the time aligned feature sequences. And finally, training acoustic model uh, given time aligned feature pairs. Uh, one example of this acoustic model is Gaussian mixer model. So one advantage of this uh, traditional framework is that uh, with lightweight acoustic models such as GMM, conversion can be done in nearly uh, real time. However, there are several limitations at the same time. Uh, firstly, it requires parallel utterances for model training. However, collecting parallel utterances can be costly and time consuming depending on the scenarios. Secondly, it, it is mainly focused on learning to convert only the voice characteristics frame by frame. So it is difficult to convert super segmental features such as accent, pitch contour, and rhythm. And typically, with the traditional uh, frameworks, super segmental features are are kept unchanged or simply adjusted using linear transformation. And thirdly, the audio quality can be severely limited, um, and the generated speech is often easily indistinguishable from real speech. So the natural question is that, uh, can we actually overcome these limitations with neural nets? So when we are using a neural network approach, it is uh, important and interesting to discuss how we should discuss uh, how how we should design 
uh, the overall systems. So the first option is a fully end-to-end -end system, um, which directly converts time domain waveform into, uh, into time domain waveform. One such example is called VQ VAE, Vector Quantized Variation Auto Encoder. Um, this framework is, of course, fine if the model can be trained on a large-scale training data. But it, I believe it is unsuitable for real-time systems since the network to train will be uh, heavy and very large. The second option consists of feature-level conversion followed by neural waveform, gener waveform generation uh, using uh, well-known WaveNet or WaveRNN. Uh, in this system, the network for feature conversion can be made small enough to allow for efficient conversion, but the network for waveform generation can still be too heavy. Uh, however, it should be noted that some attempts have recently made to build models that can be run in nearly real time. And the, the, the third option is the, the, the system we took in this approach. Um, it consists of feature-level conversion followed by vocoder-based synthesis followed by neural waveform plus filtering. So the network for feature conversion can be small, can be made small enough and also, the network for waveform post-filtering can be made significantly smaller than for um, the, the waveform generation like wave, WaveNet, since uh, you don't have to generate waveforms from scratch uh, and use the synthesized speech signal as a starting point. So to design the feature level conversion and uh, waveform post-filtering techniques, we focused on two approaches. One is image-to-image -image translation approach, and the other is sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning approach. So I will um, talk about this, these approaches um, in the following slides. So the, for the image-to-image -image translation problem, uh, one promising approach is the the method that can translate image without using pair training examples. Uh, here we uh, refer to it as unpaired image to image translation. And one uh, example for this um, is variational to encoder. As the name implies, variational to encoder is a stochastic counterpart of auto encoder, which consists of encoder and decoder. The encoder Com, uh, encodes the input image into latent representation, which is expected to correspond to a high level appearance of the input image. And the decoder tries to reconstruct image using that latent uh, representation and the, uh, and the domain index that uh, expresses the detail, detailed information. Another important approach worth noting is called Cycle Consistent Adversarial Network, uh, CycleGAN. To explain the, uh, the principle behind CycleGAN, uh, I will explain the, the theory of uh, generative adversarial uh, network. So generative adversarial network, GAN, is becoming so popular so uh, maybe I, should, I don't have to explain this to you, but just in case you're not familiar with it, uh, let me uh, try to explain it to you. So firstly, GAN is a, f a framework for training a random generator that can generate realistic data samples without assuming the class of density functions. So how to do that? Uh, the main idea is to use a real fake discriminator network, D, uh, to train the generator network. So the, gener the discriminator network uh, outputs the probability of the input X being real samples. So the task for DX will be to correctly distinguish samples generated by G uh, from real data, whereas GX attempts uh, to fool DX. So the objective function will look like this. 
this is basically the cross, co uh, cross entropy criterion for the discriminator. Um, so the, if the X is generated from the true data distribution, it will be, uh, it must be uh, close to probability one. And for the, gener the samples generated from the generator, the probability should be close to zero. So this uh, criterion becomes large when D correctly distinguishes GZ from the real sample X. And uh, of course, the generator wants to fool DX, so it wants to uh, minimize this uh, criterion. So that is why it is called adversarial loss here. So the nice thing about this uh, concept is that uh, there's, a, there's, there's a reasonable explanation why this uh, can learn a generator that uh, generates re realistic uh, data. So the, the objective function is maximized with respect to the uh, discriminator when the, uh, when the D is, ex is given by this expression. And actually, this can be obtained easily by uh, differentiating the objective function with respect to D and setting the result to zero. And by substituting this result into the objective function, um, the, the objective function will be given like this. And this gives you the objective function for the generator only. So as you can see, the, the objective function turns out to be the Jensen channel divergence between the true data distribution and the distribution of the, da the uh, distribution of the samples generated by the generator. Okay, so going back to cycle GAN, uh, this, uh, by using this adversarial loss, we can encourage the transformed images to be indistinguishable from the real images in the target domain. So the task here, the, here is to train G and F, um, which corresponds to the mapping from one domain to another. Um, but, but using just adversarial loss is not enough, uh, because only using only this will just give you uh, the generated samples that follow the distribution of the target domain. So the the nice idea in cycle GAN is to use the is the use of the another loss called cycle consistency loss, and this uh, loss encourages G and F to preserve high level appearances of the inputs. So, uh, so it's natural to come up with an idea of applying cycle GAN to VC. Um, but before we apply, before we apply, before we are applying this idea to VC task, uh, we weren't actually sure whether the high-level appearances in image really corresponds to the linguistic information in audio or speech. Uh, but it turn, turns out that this idea works actu uh, uh, pretty well also for the VC tasks. So the, the idea here is very simple. We treated the time axis as a spatial axis in an image and treated the acoustic feature sequence as an image. Okay, here are some audio examples of the cyclogan based uh, VC. This is the original speech. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. And this is the original speech of the target, uh, target speaker. Nor did Alice think it so, very much out of the way, to hear a rabbit say to itself. And this is the converted speech. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. Here's an intergender example. This in is another a... moment down, Alice went after it, never once considering how in the world she was ever going to get out again. The target speaker is the same as one I showed you earlier, and this is a converted speech. In another moment down, Alice went after it, never once considering how in the world she was ever going to get out again. 
Okay, so cycle again works reasonably well, but one limitation is that it is only able to learn mappings between a pair of domains. Um, so if you are concerned with converting speech among multiple domains, say K domains, a naive way would be to prepare and train uh, K times K minus one separate generators. However, this can be uh, obviously inefficient since there, are may, uh, since there may be global features that can be learned from speech in all the domains. So the motivation is to develop multi-domain VC that makes it possible to learn mappings among multiple domains using a single generator. So we introduced the idea uh, called Stargan, which is also proposed as, originally proposed as uh, image to image translation, uh, which can simultaneously learn mappings among different domains using a single generator network. So the difference from the, uh, from the cycle GAN is that the the generator we want to train is only one, uh, and it takes auxiliary input K, uh, which corresponds to the target domain index. So the aim here is to make GXK the generated uh, the output of the generator. Uh, become realistic and also belong to class K. So we introduce another uh, classifier called, do called domain classifier, uh, which checks whether the input is uh, appropriately uh, belonging to class K. So G is trained so that, the, so that the output, G, X, K, is classified as real by the discriminator D and class K by the class domain classifier C. And we also use the cycle consistency loss to encourage G to preserve the linguistic information of the input speech. So here are some of the examples uh, given by the, the Stargan based uh, BC. So this is the original speech of speaker one. The proper course to pursue is to offer your name and address. And uh, the converted speech is this. The proper course to pursue is to offer your name and address. The original voice of speaker four is, was like this. My last newspaper. And by converting this voice to speaker two, it sounds like this. My last newspaper. And the original voice of speaker two is like this. There were great stables. And the converted speech of this speaker to speaker three sounds like this. There were great stables. The original voice of speaker three is like this. And I truly marvel to think it could go with you into the deepest seas. And the converted speech from speaker three to speaker one is like this. And I truly marvel to think it could go with you into the deepest seas. So all the conversions are done in a, uh, using a single network. Um, however, one, there's a, uh, one weakness in Stargan uh, concept. Uh, it doesn't ensure that the transformed data follows the distribution of the data in the target domain. This is because you, you, we are using domain classifier together with real uh, fake discriminator and uses another loss, uh, additional loss. So it's actually, it makes mathematical analysis uh, pretty difficult. And here's a two, here, uh, we came up with two ideas to modify Stargan. Um, instead of using uh, two separate dis uh, classifiers, D and C, we, co we used a combined classifier that treats classes 1 to K as real classes and class K plus 1 as a fake cl face class. So we are only using the classifier C. And secondly, we use the following objective functions to op optimize the classifier and the generator. And what, what this uh, criterion means is that whatever the generator uh, generates, all the generated samples will be treated as fake samples by the classifier. And the generator tries to uh, make classifier believe that the generated samples uh, belong to the uh, appropriate class. And by using this objective function, it, it turns out that this can be interpreted as a distribution fitting 
in the same way as the, the original, uh, original GAN. Actually, this isn't published anywhere yet, and we're preparing for the paper, so I, hopefully I can uh, present this uh, pretty soon. Okay, so here's the result of the objective evaluation. The test uh, data consists of speech samples reading the same, sam same sentences by each speaker, so we can measure how acoustically different the generated speech, or the, the converted speech, is from the target, the corresponding, uh, corresponding target speech. Uh, the, the, what measure we are, we are using here is called mill capsule distortion. So the, the smaller this measure, the, the better the performance. So these two methods are baseline methods which use the idea of VA, variational to encoder, and these two, two, these two are the, based on Stargram method. And this one is the modified one, modified version, and as you can see, we can have a better uh, uh, performance than the baseline methods, and by using the modified version of Stargram, we, we can have even better performance compared to the, 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 the original Stargram-based method. Okay, so going back to the problem of waveform post filtering. Um, so the problem here is to convert synthetic speech into natural sounding high fidelity speech. So basically it's a conversion problem. So um, we could think of simply taking a learning based approach to this problem. However, it turns out to be uh, difficult. This is because mapping from synthetic to natural speech is not one to one, and this is because since uh, this is because the phase is never coherent. So what I mean by phase is uh, not coherent can be explained in this example. Um, so we, if we have a synthetic speech, um, there are multiple possibilities. Uh, for the target signal. So for example, um, if x is appropriate, then minus xt will also be appropriate. Uh, but the difference is, uh, if the phase is different. Um, but using uh, these two signals as target for model training will result in choosing zero as optimum. So this uh, illustrates the fact that the waveform's post-filtering problem should not be treated as a regular regression problem. So how to solve? Um, we can actually borrow the idea of cycle GAN for this problem too. Um, so we treat synthetic and natural speech waveforms as unfair training examples and apply cycle GAN to learn mappings between them. And the only difference here is the, uh, we are using waveform directly instead of feature sequences. Um, we also used uh, multiple discriminators, uh, each responsible for checking inputs in a different transform domain, such as MEL spectrogram and uh, MFCC domains. And here are some audio examples of wave cycle GAN, we, this, the, the method we called uh, wave cycle GAN. Um, the first example is, up, is, the, is, a, is the audio signal given after applying to, uh, applying to synthetic speech generated by DNN-based TTS system. So this is the, the input speech. So you can uh, hear that this is pretty in, uh, distinguishable uh, from real speech. And this one is the post-filter version. Okay, and uh, here are the comparisons with other waveform generators in terms of MOS score. Um, so, uh, so these two are neural vocoder, WaveNet and WaveGlow. Uh, note that the, the, for the WaveNet, we use the unofficial implementation available on GitHub. Uh, but for the Wave, 
Glow, we use the official implementation provided by the authors. So as the results show, wave cycle GAN was able to produce uh, natural, more natural speech than other uh, competing techniques. So the second topic will be about sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning approach. Um, so since traditional VC methods are frame-by-frame -frame based or segment-by-segment -segment based, it can fail to convert supra-segmental features. So one example is that it has a limited ability to convert English accents. So this is the speech speaker of Indian English. The lyric mentioned by Old Flarsen rested in its sheath on my hip. And if we apply traditional VC methods, the converted speech will sound like this. The lyric mentioned by Old Flarsen rested in its sheath on my hip. The, the target speech was like this. The lyric mentioned by Wolf Larsen rested in its sheath on my hip. Okay, as you, you can hear, the speaker identity was properly converted, but the accent was uh, unchanged. Another uh, thing is that there, the, the, the ability to convert pitch contours is uh, limited. So th this is an example of the conversion of alaryngeal speech. Alaryngeal speech refers to a speech spoken by speaker that has undergone laryngectomy, so the, the patient will not, don't have his uh, own uh, larynx to pr produce his voice. And this is the one example of a laryngeal speech. And the second example is like this. The second one is called electro-laryngeal speech, uh, which uses a special device called electro-larynx to produce, uh, produce uh, voice. And if we use the conventional uh, VC method to predict pitch contours from the input speech, the converted speech will sound like this. <laughs> Well, actually, this is Japanese example, so it's hard to, for you to under, to see whether this is natural or not. But for Japanese, you may hear, you may sound, uh, you may uh, perceive this as uh, quite unnatural pitch contour. And this one is the second example. <laughs> Okay, so so seek to seek learning is obviously uh, so popular. So maybe I don't need to explain this to you. But uh, for the reminder, let me explain it briefly, very br briefly. Uh, it offers a general framework for transforming one sequence to another uh, variable length sequence, and is uh, already shown to uh, work successfully in various tasks such tasks such as machine translation, automatic speech recognition, and text-to-speech, as introduced in the earlier uh, talks. Uh, it has an encoder and decoder structure, uh, and the encoder encodes input sentence to an internal representation, whereas the decoder generates an output sequence according to the, the obtained internal uh, representation. So one limitation with the original seek to seek learning is that uh, the input sequence is uh, transformed to a fixed length vector. So when it, so it can be problematic when it comes to longer sen sentences. So to uh, overcome this limitation, a mechanism called attention is introduced has been introduced. Uh, which allows the network to learn where to pay attention in the input sequence for each item in the output sequence. Uh, actually, several attempts have already made to uh, apply seek-to-seek -seek learning to VC tasks. Uh, actually, the third example is called Parotron. Uh, 
this I believe this will be uh, explained by the next uh, speaker. Um, so all the existing approaches, uh, the seek to seek based approaches, require ASR system or text annotations. Uh, in contrast, by contrast, our approach requires no ASR models or text annotation. Uh, thanks to model training guided by the idea called context preservation loss, uh, which is evaluated using a newly introduced uh, network called target reconstructor. Uh, and secondly, we, we have done multiple domain extension inspired by Stargan. And thirdly, uh, we tested several versions with different architectures, including Takotron inspired and fully convolutional architectures. And this is the overview of our, of our uh, seek to seek uh, VC architecture. Um, so given the source feature sequence and the target feature sequence, the main goal is to minimize the distance of distance between the sequence generated from the target decoder and the time shifted version of the target feature sequence. And uh, the, here, the, the point here is that we are using target reconstructor to uh, recover the target feature sequence from uh, the representation R uh, here. Um, so the target reconstructor aims to generate non-shifted version of Y. This is the, actually the point. And by doing so, the target decoder can concentrate on predicting uh, a few time step ahead using the uh, using the current uh, information. Okay, another thing to uh, note is that uh, we are um, adding uh, uh, target domain index to the target encoder, uh, reconstructor, and decoder. So here's uh, this shows the effect of the context preservation loss. Um, so without the, con the context preservation loss, the attention predicted at test time using the model train with uh, uh, model will be pretty unstable. But by incorporating the, this loss, uh, we can get a, a more stabilized uh, attention. So in the VC task, the attention should be uh, monotonic and continuous. So as you can see in the right uh, figures, the attention looks uh, pretty diagonal. And uh, you can see that it's working successfully. Okay, so here are um, some audio examples using our method. Um, this is an example of English accent conversion. This is the same example we showed earlier. Ah, it was sweet in my ears. And this one is a converted speech. Ah, uh, it was sweet in my ears. And this one was the target speech. Ah, uh, it was sweet in my ears. And for another uh, uh, Example: We sh get, we are having some examples of uh, electro-laryngeal to natural speech conversion. So this one, this is the input speech. And this is the converted speech. The target speech was like this. And this one is the second example. This one is the target speech. And finally, okay, we, we can also do a multiple uh, speaker identity conversion like the Stargen VC, but I'll skip this. Um, so I'll show, finally, I'll show you the real time VC demo using the seek to seek VC followed by wave cycle GAN. So this is the original voice. My name is Kotanaka from NTT. This is a conversion, converted speech. My name is Kotanaka from NTT. 
This is converted speech to male voice. これは音声変換の友です。系列変換モデルを用いた変換です。OK、so to summarize,、uh, I, we mentioned that、uh, VC techniques have great potential for overcoming many kinds of barriers in our daily verbal communication. Uh, VC systems can be extremely useful if they can produce high quality speech, they,、uh, if they can be trained efficiently, if they can be run in re nearly real time, and if they allow for a flexible conversion of not only the voice characteristics but also accents, pitch contours, and rhythms. And we developed several key techniques、uh, Cycle GAN BC, StarGAN BC, Wave Cycle GAN, Seek to Seek VC to address these requirements. Okay, so that's all for now. Thank you for your attention. Sorry, could you repeat again? Um, Actually, we did. Actually, we did. Um, um, the idea is to use seek to seek、uh, first in the first place. So、uh, the result will be speech sp spoken by different s p e a k e r and different、uh, accent. And we apply traditional VC method to convert it back to the original speaker. Then the accent can be changed only. So, the idea is to use a pipeline of two methods.、Um, the sound quality, since you have to run two methods, the sound quality will be somewhat degraded, but it sounds quite natural, I think. Ah, yeah, yes, yes, I think so. But、uh, I think the voice conversion, the, the main difference between voice conversion task and speech enhancement tasks is that, is that the source and target sequences are not aligned in VC tasks. For the speech enhancement task, I think it's easy to prepare aligned、uh, source and target sequences. So, To answer that question, it can be applied, but I don't think this technique can be necessary for it. Okay, okay.